Hey guys, let's talk about the why. Why are we building Migrating Coach Crossing? More when I return on the Eric McNeil Be Free Show. Black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Hey guys, welcome. You've just discovered the Eric McNeil Be Free Show, where it's all about being financially independent, responsible for self, enjoying life and empowering others free. So today we're going to talk about the why. Why are we building migrating culture crossing? And before we do that, however, I want to show you I got um, about I got an avocado, as they call it here, a pear. I'm about to uh, cut this bad boy up and I'm going to sprinkle some lime juice on it uh, and enjoy it. I uh, also have a tangerine I bought some tangerines uh, yesterday, and man, these have to be the sweetest tangerines I ever had in my life. You know, I've had tangerines here as well, but man, these these tangerines here, boy, this this batch, it, it's just been magnificent, magnificent. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, my last video, I, if you watched my last video, you saw I had some uh, sarsa uh, that I was enjoying. But I must uh, say, boy, this, this uh, tangerine, these tangerines have just been wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's sweet. Mm. They got a lot of seeds in them too, boy. Each little slice have a lot of seeds. But that's good, because you can plant those seeds. Your children are not going to even know what seeds are with all this artificial food you've given them. I remember when we were little and they came, they had them uh, seedless grapes. We thought that was good. Man, I don't want them grapes with all them seeds in it. Mom, give me some seedless grapes. You up there talking about the children who didn't have seedless grapes. Like that was a bad thing. Like, man, they so poor they can't even get no seedless grapes. Look at them grapes with all them seeds in it. <laughs> Foolishness. And you didn't realize the people were setting you up back then by giving you these seedless uh, fruit. You can't even grow your own fruit no more. You gotta go to them because you, your fruit don't have seeds in it. They were setting us up back then. You see that? Hmm. Those seeds are mighty important, guys. Mighty important. But anyway, let's cut this bad boy and hopefully it's, it's still good. Yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Bam. Mm hmm. Yes, indeed, boy. Yeah, I know. Let me some uh, avocado. Yeah. Yes, indeed. I love avocado. That's, that's good eating there. So, what I'm going to do is just. Sprinkle me a little juice on that bad boy. Yeah, cut that open. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's sprinkle a little juice, a little lime juice. Yeah. That's how we do it. Yes, indeed. That's how we do it. Um. Yep, just give me a spoon and scoop it out. Mm. Mm. So, 
Mm. You're gonna mess him up. At any rate, let's let's move on to the subject, which is why are we building migrating culture crossing? And for those of you who may be new, um, for the past few months, I've been uh, highlighting um, our journey in building Migrating Culture Crossing, which is uh, a planned community. It's a sustainable community. It's a planned, sustainable community. It's actually the largest planned, sustainable community of its kind on the continent of Africa. And when we went into this, it was to build a community where uh, people could live life in a sustainable manner in the way in which we felt that this is how life was supposed to be lived. Where a person uh, or a group of people have control of their own destiny, they have control of their own food supply, and it's not far rem too far removed from them. Like this is a, uh, we're starting with 200 acre community, and at least 40 acres of this community will be an organic food forest, right? Because we believe your food source should be close to you. Now that doesn't mean that every, uh, ounce of food that you eat will be grown in that food forest but it should have the capacity to provide uh, a lot of your food right very close very close it doesn't have to be shipped uh, from overseas like now you have all this stuff coming from overseas you can't uh, know what's in that food you can't know what's in these uh, products when they ship from overseas, the people can put anything in there. But when my food source is right in my own community, then I have some degree of control over that. You know, I'm passing down the street and say, hey, don't put them chemicals, you know. Uh, you can pressure the people not to put chemicals on your food, right? But when your food is being shipped from overseas, man, you, you, you don't have nothing to do. You can either eat it or not, right? You don't know what's been in it, what's not. Um, they may, you know, put something on the label and tell you it's this, that, and the other, but you don't really know because it's being shipped so far away. You don't know what happened to that food before it reached your home. So we wanted a community that put food first and that put people first. And it's like right now we have communities that, you know, put automobiles first. They put, um... <laughs> you know, this uh, uh, type of MG, you know, MSG food first and all that, those bad ingredients first in your food. You know, you think about these, these uh, nice communities that people live in, but the people are always sick. Why, why are you living in this nice community? You got this big house, but you're always sick. You got this disease and that disease heart disease and cancer and sugar diabetes and I don't know just all kind of stuff so you have to ask yourself why is this when um, I'm making a lot of money I'm able to afford a nice house I'm able to afford a nice car but you can't afford good health what's wrong with that picture right it's because um, you've chosen a lifestyle that doesn't put an emphasis on your health Right? If you're going to put an emphasis on your health, you have to look at your food. You have to take a serious look at your food. You can't just be eating these processed foods. I'm going to go grab this box of cornflakes. You know, you got to make a, uh, a, a concerted effort to say, this is the lifestyle I want. This is the type of community I need to live in. Right? Simple as that. And I looked at that, you know, when I first moved to Ghana, it was to uh, move and build a house that was off-grid, that was self-sufficient, and, you know, could give me some degree of control over my destiny, you know, and over the things that I ate in my environment. You know, I didn't want a lot of cars 
passing up through my environment. I didn't want to be inundated with, uh, you know, all of the traffic and all of the noise and all of the pollution and, you know, all those negatives. And I wanted to control, so I said, I'm going to move out in the bush and I'm going to, going to build a home in the mountain. So when we went into uh, this whole project uh, with um, Brandon, uh, and said, so, you know, this is, you know, we should build, you know, the type of community that we would like to live in because we do plan on living in this community and retiring in this community. And so if you're going to build a community in which you want to live in, uh, then, you know, to me, migrating culture crossing is it. You know, as Brandon said, you know, uh, he said, this is it. This is what people need. You know, they can come to Ghana and not feel as though um, they need to build way far out by themselves. They can have a community, but it can be a community that offers them the same type of lifestyle that they are searching for, which is one uh, that we're building that put people first. People question, you know, well, what about the cars and what about, you know, a lot of things that we're doing differently. You know, it'd be very, it's going to be very different than what you're used to, but it's going to offer you a quality of life that's just unparalleled to most communities. And that's why we're building this is because you can go into the city and you can get all those communities, you know, with, uh, that put the vehicles first, that have the access to all of the bad uh, food and the pollution and the noise. You can get that easily. But what about the type of community where you can get away from that? A community that's similar to how I live in the mountains where, you know, but you're still around a group of like-minded people. You can't get that so easily here. You can't get that so easily anywhere in Africa. In fact, you probably can't get that easily anywhere in the world. So we wanted to do something different. It's not for everybody. I'm not saying that uh, everybody is going to like what we're doing. Many people uh, have frowned upon uh, how we're going about this and what we're doing um, because they're used to having it a certain way. Right, so when we come here and say, hey, no, we're not gonna offer a lot of these things that you guys like, it's not gonna go down like that here. Um, people frown upon it, you know. I had people I had to block off my page because, you know, they was giving so much hate uh, on my Facebook, you know. Oh, you, you, that thing you doing ain't gonna be and, uh, you know, sound like this type of community. The more I sound like you create a Mormon community, or uh, Something, you know, who going to move way out there in the bush like that and live like that and pay them kind of price, blah, 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 blah. You know, so um, we have had to just do what we believe will work. And we know in our hearts that we want uh, for our family. I don't even have children, um, but, you know, Brandon is about to have his first child and recently you know he's married now and um, so we're trying to pass on something and a quality of life uh, to the inheritors you know because even though uh, I don't have um, my own children I still look at those people uh, who are going to be living here after me Right, and I'm looking out for their best interests, whether they see it or not, or whether they can appreciate it or not. So I, you know, um, what we what we have become used to is not sustainable. So we have to look at doing things in a sustainable manner, so that future generations can benefit. Uh, you know, we have to leave something better than, than what we've been doing. You know, you look around and you see all this plastic thrown everywhere and all the garbage and um, in migrating culture you know we're taking a different route where we're saying hey it's going to be compulsory to participate 
in recycling uh, your waste. You can't just throw trash around. You can't just throw uh, paper and plastic and all this plastic around everywhere. You have to, uh, you know, put your stuff in the recycling bins when we recycle it. Uh, you know, we want to have an environment where children can play in the streets and not be worried about getting motored down. We want to have an environment where you don't have these uh, vehicles zooming through the community, boom, 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 you know, all the time. And um, so it's a quite different community. And it's also a, res a resort. You know, so it's a health and wellness resort where we want people from all over the world to come and experience how a sustainable community can be created even in their own countries, right? So they can come here and eventually we want to be able to offer classes and we want to work with the uh, nearby university so that um, we can actually share what we're doing because we believe that the more people embrace this type of lifestyle they can take it back and they can create similar communities because they know now it doesn't have to be like what I've been exposed to there's a different way there's a better way and let me be the one to help implement that better way right because a lot of things that we're doing you know people can't envision it they can't see it so they question our sanity like Eric what, what are you guys thinking like I, I, I'm not gonna have um, a car compound at my house how am I gonna ever get around you know there's not gonna be a carport or a driveway at, in my house what am I gonna do if I have to bring my uh, grocery items and you're going to expect me to walk to my home and they just can't envision it. It's like, man, they can't, they can't, you know, see it. So it's like, man, that ain't going to work. I, you know, so I'm like, you know, um, you don't have to have a driveway right at your home. You look, look at apartment buildings where there's a parking compound away from the department how do they they but they they make it every day they get by every day right so everybody doesn't need to have a parking area right and when we don't give a parking area to everybody we can take that land that we say and that can be part of the organic food forest so yeah so it's a quite a different community but um Again, this is a resort community. You're going to have a quality of life. You're going to be in a resort, a health and wellness resort, where you're going to see the benefits unfold. Um, so that's why we're doing it. And, and we're building quality homes. We're not building cheap homes because what we're doing is uh, we're offering like 10-year uh, limited warranties on these homes. and. And only one other company, even in, in Ghana, offering 10-year limited warranties. We know about them in the West. Uh, you know, it's usually an item when you purchase a home, you can purchase one of these extended warranty plans. And uh, so all of our homes will include this standard. So we're building very quality uh, homes. We're, not, we're building homes to Western specifications uh, that are very high quality, guys. Uh, you're not going to find too many people in Ghana offering what we are offering for the price point. So, um, yeah, and, and we're excited to be doing this and we're building it because we believe that there's a better way. We believe that there's a better way to live, work, and play. And that's what Migrating Coach Crossing is creating. Now, if you haven't already heard, you know, we've been talking about um, a half-price home sale that we are getting ready to implement. And it's on, it starts on November the 26th. That's going to be the first day you can reserve your home for half price. You just go to the website and you do your, you know, pick out your model, you check out, you know, pick your model, and you'll see a coupon 
code for you to get whichever you know we have several pr promo offers we have the 50 percent off um, offer and if you select that that means you you're willing to prepay the entire amount of the house and you're willing to wait up to 36 months to take delivery but if you that doesn't work for you we have the 25 percent off and that means that you are willing to prepay and you're willing to wait up to 24 months to take delivery of your home that doesn't work we have the 12 and a half percent uh, off promo and that means you're willing to pay 60% uh, up front pay 20% uh, once we reach lentil level which is finishing your walls and then pay the final 20% once we roof you in and you're willing to wait uh, 24 months if neither one of those work then you can select our everyday payment option which is but as you know there's no discount on that option the price is what you see on the website and you will agree to pay 30 percent up front uh, 30 percent when we reach lentil level 30 percent when we roof you in and the final 10 percent when we complete your house and you're willing to wait up to 24 months to take delivery of your home there you go those are the four options that we offer guys so um, do by, by all means you know really look at this and what we are offering um, you know look at our backgrounds you know look at the people ask me well Eric that's a big leap of faith that you with these discounts you yes it's a big leap of faith that we're asking you for and um, you have to do your due diligence and determining is this you know the risk versus the reward is it worth it are these guys credible where do they come from like you know you, you um, I have a very uh, very well-known family um, and where I was born in Mobile Alabama and uh, I'm the youngest of nine children and so you know every every everybody knows us uh, there in, in my community that I grew up in and you know right now you go on my website I mean my uh, Facebook page you know um, you see me interacting with my family and things like that so I'm not an unknown you know some people just pop up you don't know where they came from and um, you know and I've been doing business for over 20 years you know as an entrepreneur and you can look at Brandon's body of work in the uh, architectural and building space here in Ghana and when he's been here some 12 years building uh, you know so you can look at all his his body of work that is a community that um, that they just recently finished um, called Habasha and um, that community was designed and uh, a lot of it was built by Brandon he built you know um, all of the the, uh, they have like these the domes you might have seen domes for Africa which Brandon uh, has built and so he built about four or five of these domes there at Habershaw he designed uh, the buildings and you know laid it out and everything so that, that's his work right so man you know the, the guy has been around he, he ain't nobody you know he disappeared on nobody and um, you know, there's nowhere for us to disappear. We have to do what we say we're going to do, period. <laughs> Ain't no disappearing, right? We're too interconnected into uh, various institutions. Both of us graduated from FAMU. We're very well connected to the university. So um, we can't disappear, right? We have too much at stake. We, we're real uh, serious business people. So at any rate, you know, um, you like what we're talking about go ahead hit that subscribe button like share comment give us your feedback let me know what you're thinking and if you haven't already done so definitely check out the website of migrating culture crossing this community at uh, www.migratingculturecrossing.com has all of the information out there guys everything 
you want to know, we put out there on the website for you. And you can also reach me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Eric McNeil is free. And as always, hoorah, ahuru. Now be free.